Welcome to Little Steps Big Gains. In this video, we are going to talk about a fantastic study entitled Intensive Coordination Training Improves Motor Performance in Degenerative Cerebellar Disease. The purpose of this video is to go over this fantastic study and then bridge the clinical gap by going over evidence-based exercises that can improve balance, gait, and coordination in degenerative cerebellar disease. If you find this video educational or helpful, please press that like, subscribe below. I would like to give full credit to the authors of this study, Dr. Ilg and colleagues, as well as physiotherapist Doris Bretz. You can find her homepage with fantastic resources, as well as a link to the entire study in the description below. Ataxia is a condition that results from damage or degeneration to a part of the brain in the back called the cerebellum. Now, ataxia can be acquired through something like a stroke or a traumatic brain injury, but it can also be inherited through a hereditary or genetic origin. Now, another very key difference here, okay, is that acquired ataxia through something such as a stroke often only affect part of the cerebellum, in which case intact regions can compensate for damaged ones. In contrast, degenerative ataxias often affect the entire cerebellum. So the question is, can coordination training be effective for those progressive ataxias caused by diffuse degeneration of the cerebellum? That is the objective of this study. Methods. Within this study, 16 individuals with a progressive ataxia participated in a four-week intensive coordination training program. To monitor changes, individuals were assessed eight weeks before the program, right before the program, right after the program, eight weeks after that, and then were reassessed in a one-year follow-up study. Specific assessments included the clinical ataxia rating scale, individual goal attainment scores, and quantitative movement analysis. Results. According to the study, significant improvements in motor performance and a reduction of ataxia symptoms were observed in those clinical scores after the program and in those follow-up reassessments. Specific improvements were seen in gait-like velocity, lateral sway, intralimb coordination, and the regulation of static and dynamic balance. And another very exciting finding was that when reassessed in that one-year follow-up study, improvements were sustainable. When compared to their initial scores, individuals still scored higher in balance, stability, and postural control. Now, the individuals that did the exercises more often did have better results, but this shows the strong potential behind these exercises. Of note, individuals with a predominant cerebellar ataxia did reveal more distinct improvements than those with an afferent ataxia, such as Friedrich's ataxia. Conclusions. In patients with cerebellar ataxia, coordination training improves motor performance and reduces ataxia symptoms, enabling them to achieve personal, meaningful goals in everyday life. Training effects were more distinct for patients whose afferent pathways were not affected. For both groups, continuous training seems crucial for stabilizing improvements and should become standard of care. So what was this intensive coordination training program? To answer that question, I contacted the authors of the study and the physiotherapist Doris Bretz. She then provided evidence-based exercises that can improve balance, stability, and postural control. We are going to go over some of those exercises here in this video. Now, in order to achieve motor learning, repetition is essential. Doing 10 of each exercise is desirable.
However, because the purpose of this video is education, I have created a 30-day program for application. This free 30-day program focuses on utilizing the exercises from this particular study, but then I personally modified the dosages to create 30 days to add that diversity. You can find that 30-day coordinative training challenge in the description below, along with a list of these exercises for repetition. Exercises fell into the following categories. Static balance, such as standing on one leg. Dynamic balance, such as stepping. Whole body movements to train intralimb coordination. And then steps to prevent falling and falling strategies. Category one, static balance. Standing on one leg. Quadruped standing, stabilize the trunk, lift one arm. Quadruped standing, stabilize the trunk, lift one leg. Quadruped standing, lift one arm and the leg of the other side. Category number two, dynamic balance. Kneeling, put one foot in front and back alternatingly. Kneeling, put one foot in front, stand up, put one leg back, kneeling alternatingly. Standing, swing arms, seesaw knees. Standing, step to the side. Standing, step in front. Standing, step back. Standing, cross over step. Climbing stairs, walking over uneven ground. Category number three, whole body movements to train trunk limb coordination. Quadruped standing, lift one arm and the leg of the other side. Flex arm, leg, and trunk. Extend arm, leg, and trunk alternatingly. Morning prayer, kneeling, bend legs, arms, and trunk. Extend leg, arms, and trunk alternatingly. Kneeling, sit beside the heel of the right side. Kneeling, Sit beside the heel of the left side, alternatingly. Category number four, steps to prevent falling and falling strategies to prevent trauma. Standing, step to the side, step to the front, step back, crossover step in a dynamic alteration.
standing, bend the trunk and the knees to touch the floor. Erect the body alternatingly. Standing, bend the trunk and the knees, touch the floor and go down into quadruped standing. Rotation of the spine. Supine laying, knees bended, rotate the knees to the right and left side. Rotation of the spine, knees lifted. Supine laying, legs lifted 90 degrees hip flexion and 90 degrees knee flexion. Rotate the knees to the right and left side. Flexion of the shoulder, supine laying, Lift the arm in the direction of the head. I hope that you found this video educational in learning how exercise can be effective for degenerative cerebellar disease. I also hope that you found it informative learning some evidence-based exercises that can improve balance, stability, and postural control in this population. If you did, please press that like subscribe below. Also, once again, check out the resources from physiotherapist Doris Spritz in the description below. And also check out my channel for free educational videos and free home exercise programs because little steps together, we can make some big gains.